welcome to the SBCA podcast, Component Connection. Hello, my name is Sean Shields, and today I'll be your host for this SBCA podcast. We'll be exploring the latest efforts by SBCA to help component manufacturers grow market share and take advantage of opportunities in today's market. My guest today is Greg Griggs, Senior Vice President of Manufacturing for Builders First Source. Greg has been in the business for 35 years and has worked in several trust plants across the country. He's the current president of SBCA and has been the chair of the marketing committee for the past four years. Greg, to start off, what would you say is your favorite part about working in the industry right now? Well, first of all, good afternoon, Sean. Um, happy to be here and happy to be able to participate in this podcast. Um, so probably the favorite part of working in the industry right now is um, you know, the housing market remains steady. Uh, and the need for building components continues to grow. Uh, the labor challenges in the market have really opened the door to the entire home building industry to explore other opportunities to continue to meet current and future demands, and building components seem to be at the top of the list. So with all these challenges out there, I think all of our, our, our customers are out there trying to find ways to get the same amount of houses done with less and trying to exceed that with more efficient um, opportunities. So. Uh, to answer the question, really, you know, along with the robust housing environment, the ongoing opportunities to expand the use of building components and expand our industry's market share is what excites me the most. And I think they w will see a lot of that in the years to come. Uh, I don't see, you know, the labor challenges really um, getting getting any better. Um, we're going to continue to fight those battles, and hopefully, uh, building components are, are a great opportunity for our for our market to use to kind of offset some of that. Hmm. Well, Greg, it certainly sounds like you have a lot of passion for what's going on in the industry right now, which is good. How has that passion driven what you've focused on as president of SBCA this year? I think the, the passion really drives into uh, kind of what, what our association membership really, really needs in today's environment. And, and also in the overall market, you know, with ongoing need to make the overall building process more efficient and with our ongoing labor challenges, one of our main focuses this year has really been to emphasize the use of building components uh, and, our, and our continued focus on converting conventional framing to building component framing. Um, obviously, that's been an ongoing initiative for us. I think we've made a little, we've made quite a bit of progress this year. We've had a few situations where we've had uh, pr predominant stick frame builders come to component manufacturers and kind of explore different avenues to uh, construct their product. Uh, and I believe that initiative really led us to the development of Best Way to Frame. That's a website we designed specifically to express the advantages of the use of components, as well as an information center for all participants in the building process to explore and understand those advantages as well as detailed information about the use of components in our applications. So uh, if you get a chance to go to the site, you're going to see a lot of information. It's going to be kind of segmented, really specific to which entity in the process that you really need to uh, educate. Uh, and with, with any, each one of those sections, I think you'll find adequate information to really be able to sit down and educate and inform uh, general contractors, architects, engineers, uh, everybody involved in that building process. So um, I'd, I'd encourage everybody to go visit the bestwaytoframe.com website. I think it's uh, some very valuable information there that uh, will be very beneficial. Interesting. So, Greg, beyond the bestwaytoframe.com website, you know, when people look back at um, this year that you've been president, and they look at what SBCA has accomplished. What would you hope is the thing that people point to and say that was really awesome that SBCA did that? Well, I obviously made a statement about my marketing committee chair uh, tenure, and um, you know, I think marketing's out front. That's really kind of what we need to get out there in the market and and push our product. So, you know, one of the things really is I. I really hope that our continued efforts to develop and provide industry tools to our to our membership have provided the value expected. But I think to me, um, the most valuable thing that I think we provided to the industry was really a stronger collaborative effort between all association members, component manufacturers and industry suppliers both, 
uh, with the best interests of the overall association and industry in mind. So um, I think one of my focuses is really just um, collaborating more together uh, on on topics that impact the industry and trying to trying to bond a little bit tighter as an association. And uh, you know, if, if if we accomplish that, then then I I feel very good about my presidency. You know, you touched on something that, that I think has come out of the realignment between uh, SPCA and and the Trust Plate Institute's um, scopes of responsibility. Uh, we, as part of that, we created the Trust Industry Business Council uh, in a hope to facilitate more effective communication between uh, the organization and the members of SBCA and the organization and members of, of TPI. Um, the TIBC had a meeting in Fort Worth um, recently. Given the experience Correct. that you've had participating in that, um, what do you hope is the long-term value in that group um you know I, I think it's really about um everybody coming together both sides tpi and sbca in a consolidated effort to collaborate and work more closely together as an industry um, i think it's it's to make sure that we're all aligned on industry projects and that all those projects are vetted and are beneficial to the industry and then uh, really making sure there are no unintended consequences for the component manufacturer or the industry supplier. You know, I think before we were kind of sometimes in the same direction, sometimes in opposite, sometimes going in diagonals and having this TIBC come together as, uh, you know, TPI and SBCA as, as one council group, hopefully we're swimming down the stream in the same direction and we're basically investigating each project with, um, you know, what, what's in the best interest of the industry and what are those impacts that we need to be aware of that could potentially come out of any project. Sounds like a good thing. Um, you know, when you talk about some of the initiatives that, that SBCA has undertaken beyond marketing, I know one of the things that we've talked about a lot, uh, both on the board and in the TIBC is, um, the digital QC program. Um, there have been a lot of efforts put into that over the last year. Uh, we got an update that there's progress forward. In what ways do you see the digital QC program being a game changer for the average CM? It's been a long time coming. Uh, I'll say that um, the digital QC process, it's gonna be definitely a more efficient process to track and, and monitor QC in comparison to what we, we all utilize today. You know, the current process really really depends on manual inspection, manual data recording and entry, and then you got a final submittal for review. Uh, obviously, uh, for, for any plant, that's very time consuming and you know, you're dedicating personnel to make sure that you get those inspections done as required to get your data submitted to SBCA for review. Um, the current process is, is also challenging to review or retrieve historical data for the inspected trusses. Uh, currently, all of our QC data is documented on paper and then filed away. So we've got uh, stacks and stacks of paper with uh, inspection notes and data and uh, everything we put together to submit for, for final submittal and approval. Um, I think this new digital QC process, uh, it's going to allow us to utilize, you know, basically tablet technology for our joint inspection, really without the need for documenting on paper. I think everything we inspect will be kind of saved off into a database, which is uh, easily submittable and easily retrievable should we ever need that data. Um, you know, all the inspection data, keep in mind, um, the, the joint photo included, it's going to be stored in a database. So, uh, like I said, that's going to be uh, more efficient uh, for after the fact inspections, as well as the inspection process itself. I think we're going to be able to go to the plant floor. We're going to be able to conduct the inspection process uh, more efficiently, uh, get a lot better detail, a lot better perspective, and uh, be better off for it. So in a nutshell, I mean, I think the new digital QC process will provide a substantial saving, time savings in the inspection process and give us a lot better quality data. Excellent. 
So beyond the digital QC program, uh, I know SPCA has also been conducting this comprehensive test plan on the effect of weather on the structural performance of trusses. We talked a lot about that at the board meetings. Why do you believe that this is an important thing and what value do you see coming out of the results? What, what will it bring to component manufacturers? I, I, I think that all component manufacturers kind of go through this process where we, you know, we have orders that get built based on expected delivery dates and something happens um, and, you know, those delivery dates get pushed. And then, you know, in some certain instances that that delivery delay is pretty extensive. So what that means is we've got um, everything stored outside and in most plants, the majority of the finished goods space is, is being continuously exposed to the elements. So I think this testing is going to provide us with uh, the, imp the impact of those elements. So what is, what is excessive sun, excessive rain, uh, dry heat, all those different elements. Uh, what what's the impact on the structural integrity of our products over certain time frames and and those exposure conditions? So the advantage I think it's going to provide us the accurate data to know when our product has been compromised and is no, no longer adequate for use. I mean today uh, we, we go out and we take a look and we look at plate embedment, we look at uh, kind of coloration of the product, and we kind of make some um, kind of educated. Uh, decisions as to, you know, is that still a adequate product to, to ship to the job site or have we really just compromised the integrity and we really need to just rebuild the product. So I think all this testing data is going to provide the component manufacturers with the data that they need to make educated decisions regarding that. Hmm. So Greg, at, at the last OQM, um, we talked a little bit about component manufacturers opportunity to rebrand themselves. Um, it was mostly in the context of sort of how, how do we as an industry decide to market ourselves uh, to the broader um, residential construction industry. And I'm not sure that anybody reached any conclusions during those discussions, but it did raise the point that there definitely is an opportunity facing component manufacturers right now um, particularly with the labor shortage, that b builders are looking for a way to get more houses built, given the demand, um, and they're having to do it with less labor. And so, you know, the, the buzzword these days is off-site construction. We would prefer something like component system um, or component construction, that kind of thing. Um, you know, given the recent experience you had, which you alluded to at the beginning of... Um, you know, sort of having a conversation with uh, your builder customers and some framers about converting from sticks to components. What opportunity do you see is out there for component manufacturers right now to sort of uh, seize upon that opportunity and to um, take advantage of this, dare I say, sort of offsite construction uh, trend? That's a great question. Uh, I think you know right now there's there's quite a bit of opportunity dependent upon uh, you know what what products that you have the capability of manufacturing or want to in invest uh, the appropriate resources to get into. So you know trust trusses whether it be roof or floor pretty predominant in the market pretty well known pretty well used um, uh, wall panels is is one of those other products that. Um, normally when labor gets a little short, you know, everybody wants to lean on panels because they can do more with less and get things done quicker than, uh, um, than they can stick frame. So, um, there's a few people involved in wall panels are getting into wall panels. That's an opportunity, uh, depending on, you know, the market's really driving, uh, the, the need for the product. Um, so I think, you know, we'll see that evolve a little bit as time progresses. You hear uh, others talking about other product segments, such as they use the word floor cassettes. Um, to me, that's that's floor panels. So let's take conventional framing, eye joist framing, or floor truss framing, and let's let's put floor sections together with sheathing applied, uh, stack them on a truck, and then get them to the job site. And let them crane set those panels to where 
you know, they can uh, set a whole floor system within a matter of hours instead of days. Um, I think there's there's plenty of other opportunity out there. Um, you know, we talk about wall components. So we talk about window and door framing rough openings or the, the corners and the, the T's for wall intersections. Um, you know, those, those are another product that may bring some opportunity. Um, it's really kind of dependent on, you know, we've got all these opportunities out there. It's really what, what's the market asking for and, and you know, what, what's, what's driving it. So looking forward to October and the annual BCMC show, what would you say to your fellow component manufacturers who may be on the fence about attending at this point? Why do they need to attend this year? BCMC, uh, it's, a, it's a great show. I mean, it, it continues to grow and impress and exceed expectations, uh, which is why, in my opinion, it is the premier industry show out there. It is the only one for us, component manufacturers. Um, you know, over the years, our exhibitor space continues to expand and exceed previous years. Uh, the educational ses sessions are, are, are bar none the best in the industry and continue to pro provide valuable information. Uh, and I think really being able to connect with other CMs, friends, and acquaintances, it's, that's, it's always a great time. Um, so we get some education. Um, we see what new equipment's coming out. We, we see a lot of old friends and acquaintances. Um, that makes BCMC pretty exciting. It's, it's, Columbus is a great city. That's always been a great venue for BCMC. Um, Exciting part for me is, you know, we, we always seem to get a few new exhibitors every year. And, uh, you know, this year we've got a few new exhibitors as well. So it's not just, it, it's always kind of evolving and changing. Uh, and I think as, as we continue down this path, we're going to start to really um, look into other equipment exhibitors and other product exhibitors that really relate to our industry. And I think BCMC is going to continue to grow. So Columbus is a great city. Um, pretty exciting every year, and uh, you know I, I really look forward to seeing everybody in Columbus in October. You know, Greg, you hit upon one of the 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 big things that we we typically promote about BCMC, which is it's an opportunity for the industry to get together, um, and that that face to face element seems to be the key part, right? I mean, we can communicate by right. email, we can call each other and that kind of thing, but there just isn't a substitute for seeing each other face to face, sitting down and seeing where a conversation will go. Um, obviously that happens in its biggest, most prominent form at BCMC, but there's also the SPCA meetings that happen throughout the year, whether they're the SPCA open quarterly meetings or chapter meetings. Can you right. share a little bit about your experience of how those interpersonal relationships that you've developed through those face-to-face -face meetings, how that have, has impacted you and how you um, just function and operate and make decisions in this industry? Yeah, I mean, I think I think those relationships develop, and I, I understand that, you know, we, it, on, on most days, we're competitors, but, you know, as we come together as an industry, I've always said, we kind of check that competitiveness at the door and then come together as an industry. So, uh, you know, uh, crossing those boundaries i think that's it's a it's just a relationship where uh you can share challenges and uh experiences without you know really divulging any specific uh protected information um i think really what everybody gets out of it is it it becomes it becomes a friendship knowing that like i said you are competitors but um you know, it's, it's nothing for, you know, somebody to send you a text or pick up the phone, talk about, uh, you know, safety related recommendations, uh, e e equipment stuff, um, everything above. Um, and I think that's a pretty important part. Uh, when we get the OQMs is that um, we all come together as one, uh, work on what we feel is, you know, the best in the best interest of the industry and uh, try to move those things forward. Right. Last question for you, Greg. You know, when we were at the last OQM, where we were looking at the recent data from the Home Innovations Labs and their survey that they had done of builders, and 
when you looked at all the statistics about what did builders uh, consider uh, using more of over the next five years, the products that our industry creates, roof trusses, wall panels, floor trusses, or floor systems, all of those things were um, saw you know, double digit percentage increases. Uh, and it didn't even matter what size home builder they were. Certainly the, the larger the builder, the more they were planning on, on relying on those things. So when you look over the next five years, it looks like you know the the future is pretty bright for industry. The demand for the products that our industry make is going to be pretty strong. When you look five years out, just in your crystal ball, like what would you like to see component manufacturers do differently, um, or what would you like to see change in our industry that would help us uh, take advantage of that increasing demand? Oh, I think I think probably um, it's going to be what, you know what I would like to see change or what is going to assist us to um, be able to continue to keep up that demand is we talked a lot today about kind of our labor challenges and I think what we all foresee and are looking for is is kind of the next best thing in equipment and automation and. Uh, sometimes, you know, full automation is, it really doesn't fit the bill. So I think everybody's kind of looking for, you know, what, what application in automation kind of fits certain aspects of the business the best and it can assist with some of those labor challenges. Um, and, and of course, I, I want to continue to really five years down the road, I want to continue to pursue, you know, trying to promote component manufacturing and, the use of and trying to convert conventional frame to, to component framing um, can, and continue that initiative forward. Uh, and I, I think if we all continue to work together on that, I think we will we'll see that uh, progress and expand. Excellent. Well, Greg, thank you very much for taking time today to join us on our podcast. I'd also like to thank our listeners for spending this time with us and hopefully gained some insight into how SBCA's current activities are helping CMs capitalize on today's market opportunities. Thanks, Greg. You're welcome. Thank you for listening to SBCA's podcast, Component Connection. We are committed to bringing you a variety of information via this podcast. Please email your feedback or suggestions for future topics to podcast at sbcindustry.com. 